Welcome to the first of three parts of Classic Myths to Read Aloud. This is the story of Jason and the Golden Fleece, and I'll be using the excellent text by William F. Russell. All copyright belongs to Mr. Russell, and description and link to the book will be down in the description. This is part one of three. Settle in and enjoy. This is the story of what was, perhaps, the first great quest in European literature. Like the quest for the Holy Grail, or Don Quixote's quest to restore chivalry to the world, or Luke Skywalker's quest to prevent the takeover of the universe, this is the tale of a courageous hero who must travel far from home and encounter numerous dangers before his determination and goodness finally win the day. The tale presented here refers only briefly to the many monsters and dangers that Jason faces along his journey to the land of the Golden Fleece, and it does not mention his companions by name, though some of them, like Hercules, Theseus, and Orpheus, may be known to readers and listeners alike. It does, however, provide a brief and exciting introduction to one of the most famous adventure stories ever told. Long, long ago, there lived in Greece a proud king who had a beautiful wife named Nephili. Now, Nephili means cloud, and there was something about this fair young queen that made one think of soft pink and gold-edged clouds on a summer's evening. The king and queen had two children, a boy named Phrixus and a girl named Heli, and they brought such pleasure to their parents that the whole family lived each day and night in happiness. Only one thing marred their joy, and it was a strange thing indeed. For in the hot summer days, when the sky was cloudless and the air was dry and still, Nephili would grow thin and pale, and then she would leave her home for a long time and come back only when the soft rain clouds were again in the air. Now some people said that these clouds were her sisters, and that when they left the sky, she had to travel far away with them. But no one really knew where Nephili went or why. As you can imagine, there came a time when the king began to grow tired of his wife's long and mysterious, mysterious absences. And there was, as well, a beautiful dark-eyed lady in town who encouraged his anger, for she had long been in love with the king, and she saw this as a chance to have him for herself. The lady's name was Ino, but there was precious little lady in her, for in truth she was a witch with strange and magic powers. Before long, Ino had made the king forget all about Nephili, and had even talked him into marrying herself instead. Now, Ino hated Phrixus and Heli because they were not her own children, and because they were beautiful and good. Soon, she began to mistreat them in terrible ways. She took their fine royal clothes and made them dress in rags. She wouldn't allow them to live in the palace, and instead they had to live with the shepherd's children in a tumble-down old cottage that they had to work all day long guarding the shepherd's flock on the hillsides. But if the truth were known, Phrixus and Heli were really not very unhappy, for they loved to frolic in the green fields all day, and besides, they did not care much about what they ate or wore. Their only grief was at the loss of their lovely young mother, Nephili. Nephili had now been gone a long, long while. The sky was cloudless day after day. Not a drop of rain fell. The fields became parched and dry, and all the crops withered away. There was not enough food for the people, and everywhere they were dying of hunger. The king at last sent messengers to an oracle in a distant city, asking what he must do to bring back food and health to his people. But his wicked wife, Ino, who was now the queen of the land, saw this as a chance to rid herself of the king's two children once and for all. And so she secretly bribed the messengers and told them that, when they returned, 
They were to announce that the oracle had said Phrixus and Helle must be killed before rain would once again fall upon the land. Now these messengers were eager for the gold that the queen offered, and so they did just as they were told. In a few days, they came back to the king with their false report, and they announced to all the nobles who were assembled at the palace that only when Phrixus and Helle were dead would comfort and plenty come back to the people of the kingdom. The king was very sorrowful at this news, but he knew that he could not disobey the gods, and with Aino's encouragement, he ordered that the sacrifice be carried out with all possible haste. Everything was prepared, and the children were brought from the hills to the courtyard of the palace and decked out in white robes and flowers, as was the custom in those days for adorning things that were about to be sacrificed. Here they were tied to be tied and placed on top of a huge pile of logs that would soon become a raging bonfire. But just as they neared the spot where they were to be put to death, Suddenly there came flying from the heavens a golden-fleeced ram, which the gods had sent in answer to Nephili's prayer. Nephili, you see, only seemed to be far away. In truth, she had been watching over her children from above all the while. Quick as a flash, Phrixus sprang upon the ram's back with Heli behind him, and the next minute they were flying high above the courtyard, far beyond the reach of the astonished people below. Over land and sea flew the golden ram, faster and faster every moment, until Helly became so weary of the dizzy flight that she loosened her grip from the ram's golden fleece, and she fell down and down through the air until she splashed into the water of a narrow sea that they happened to be flying over at the time, and she was drowned. But Phrixus clung to the ram's back, and they flew on over the great black sea until they reached a country called Colchis. There, the ram glided gently down to the ground, so tired and weary from this long and difficult journey that it soon died. Phrixus stripped the beautiful golden fleece from the ram's back, and he hung it on an oak tree in a dark forest. And there, it was guarded by a monstrous dragon that never slept neither during the night nor during the day, so that nobody dared go near the fleece. And Phrixus remained in the land and married the king's daughter, and they lived happily together for many years until Phrixus died. And all this time the wondrous golden fleece hung on the branch of that same oak tree, guarded over by that same dragon. And for many years thereafter, the legend of the Golden Fleece spread to all parts of the world. No one was able to steal the fleece or to deceive the dragon who guarded it. Okay, thank you for listening. That's the end of part one. Uh, part two will be coming soon. It's about the same minutes. It's about eight minutes long, and you'll introduce Jason finally into his own story. And then, of course, there's a part three. That's going to be the longest part. It's about 10 minutes. Hope to see you back. Thanks for watching.